Okay, I'll have links to the gear in the video description, and uh, if you hang in there long enough, I'll describe the significance of this picture. Why are all my reels in this box? All right, the video really has two purposes. Um, one is I'd like to just cover the fishery for 2019, the, the different species, uh, my impression, my experience. Uh, I also want to cover some of my favorite pieces of gear. I'm sitting on top of one of those favorite pieces right now. It's a 2019 Hobie Outback. Uh, you look, I'm pumping on those pedals a little because I have no drift. So I'm back pedaling. This thing will go in reverse and uh, this keeps my line out on an angle. So it's beautiful to stick it in reverse. Give a few pumps, dial in exactly the drift speed I want. Uh, this is a beautifully laid out kayak. And uh, yep, this is my maiden voyage, first trip with the kayak. And uh, here comes a fish. Oh, look at this. Hey, weak fish are nowhere near as plentiful as back in like the 1980s and 70s and all of that, but this was a pretty good year for them, and I caught a fair number of them accidentally. Uh, the Fire Island area had a beautiful fishery throughout 2019 for weak fish. They did very well. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to see this guy. Uh, it was a surprise. Uh, it was not my first week fish of the season. My first one actually came uh, in April when I was casting for stripers. Hey, look at that little feature there. Yep, pop that box open, and uh, that's waterproof down there. I've got my camera keys, a bunch of stuff I want to keep dry right beneath me. Uh, really nice feature. So, yeah, that first week fish, um, 4 o'clock in the morning in April, casted for stripers, a beautiful tide runner, uh, a great way to start the season. Okay, still on that maiden voyage. Uh, the kayak has beautiful features, gear tracks, and things to mount stuff on. Just, just spectacular. I want to point out the line, Berkeley X9. Very smooth, very thin. It's become my favorite fluke jigging line, and uh, that's what I'm using here. Oh, that's a better one. Damn yeah! Freaking nice. All right, a huge new piece of gear for me this season. That trolling motor up on the bow, a and you know what? It also talks to the fish finder, so you can. Uh, have an autopilot track in there, you see a line drawn on your plotter, you know exactly where you're going, you can dial in your speed perfectly. I'm in a situation here where I've got wind against current, that's why there's nobody here, because if you don't have a trolling motor, you basically can't fish this for fluke effectively at this point because there's no drift. With the trolling motor, not a problem. I put in exactly the track I want, exactly the speed, and, uh, and it just pays off because you can make exactly the presentation that you want to make. Otherwise, no, I'd have to fish someplace else at this particular time with that wind in opposition to the current. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Bigger than the other one. All right, now the quality of the fluke fishing this year depended heavily on where you were. Uh, this is the Baconic Bay system early in the year. Uh, the fishing was not great at all. It was fair at best. Um, 
the fishing in Long Island Sound this season, horrid. The worst I've seen in many, many years. Just absolutely terrible. Uh, on the upside, this is uh, Shinnecock Bay. No, this is Mauritius Bay. I also fish Shinnecock Bay. Um, the bays behind the barrier islands along S Long Island South Shore, this nice shallow water, wading, kayaking, all of this. Hey, this was good. This was definitely better than it's been in the last couple of years. There were a lot of fish. There were some nice ones. Um, it really was quite a contrast to how poor the Long Island Sound fishery was. Out in the ocean, it was pretty good. Outside these inlets, Shinnecock, Mauritius, uh, it was okay. It wasn't like it was five years ago, but it was still pretty good. Montauk is always good. Uh, that, that's a great fishery, and uh, that was really strong. So it depended where you were. Um, but this was working out really well for me, uh, making some of these nice shallow water trips. Yeah, there we go. Oh! <laughs> oh, come on. How many times are you going to hit that thing? That fish came off twice. It's not a bad one. Look at this, this is a keep, holy smokes. That's a nice one. Wow. Damn. That's big. Wow, that's a beauty. Okay, before I move on to the next fishery, I want to mention that uh, I did an online fluke fishing course with the guys at SaltStrong, and you can check that out at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. Uh, people have taken it, have really given me great feedback, so I'm really proud of that. Okay, sea bass. Never any shortage of sea bass, it seems. Um, hey, you see what? I've, I've got that um, remote in my hand, so you know we're fighting a bad drift over here too, and I'm using that trolling motor, and Katie's got a big sea bass on. Um, something I should say about Katie, she, despite the fact that she seems like this little girl sitting up there, she actually earned her PhD this year, and she is now um, an assistant professor at the University of Michigan in robotics, so uh, I find that really hard to wrap my mind around, but that's what it is, so that's Dr. Katie up there in the bow um, pulling on this big sea bass. That is, the, that is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Wow. Oh, what a beautiful picture that's going to make. You know what? I'm going to just plant us here. Wow. That is... I've never caught one that big. <laughs> oh, beautiful fish. Uh, that would be my personal best if I caught it. So, yeah, that's a really nice one. It's the biggest thing I've learned in striped bass fishing in a long time. See that plug coming in that's a spook if you're from New England you're shaking your head going why didn't he know about these because they're very popular up there um, I don't know I haven't don't see them in the shops in Long Island don't see people using them uh, Jerry Audette who's uh, from up in the Northeast told me about these said he was catching fish on them that um, fish that wouldn't hit pencils this is the first cast I'm ever gonna make with one I'm going to completely mess up the retrieve, although in my defense, you saw that nice action I had in that other clip. That was like 20 minutes after this, so um, I did calm it down and uh, get the correct retrieve. But the cool thing is, despite my inexperience with these really big spooks, um, and the fact that I'm, I'm not trying to work it like a pencil, but boy, I look at that rod action, it's very similar. The cool thing is, I've got good enough action on this plug to get a striper behind it. The fish is going to follow for, I think it was 21 seconds or 19 seconds it stayed behind this plug. And, uh, okay, so let's watch.
Another piece of gear that you're going to see in a second that I really love this season is the Tsunami Salt X Reel. This is a 6000. Uh, yeah, I used it for about half the year and uh, just spectacular. I also, this is not something that's new, but it's new for me, is this particular GSB, this Lama Glass GSB 10 footer. This is the L model. Uh, you know what? The factory rods these guys are making now, the GSBs, are just beautiful. Um, so I, I really like that. But yep, that's Saltex. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you see that. Uh, for the striper videos in this kind of setting, you're going to see that over and over again. It's uh, really been good. Ah, something else. You may have seen me reach into that plier sheath, get the pliers. Turtle Cove Tackle, they make a plier sheath and a boga holder. Uh, both great. All right, let's move on to this rod. I've got some false albacore bouncing around on the surface there, and this rod is a Tsunami Trophy 2. Uh, you know what? I just showed you that Lama Glass GSB. It's a $440 rod. This thing, it's like 90 bucks. Uh, they've got a whole line of really nice. Um, these are two piece Ooh. with a 70 30 okay. split. They feel like one piece rods. Uh, just spectacular for the price. And uh, yep, I can handle this Albi nicely. Okay, while I'm cranking on this guy, let me uh, say a few words about the striper fishery, at least my impression. I didn't see much of a change between 2018 and 2019. That's, you know, it's not good. It hasn't been great. Um, there's a lot of small fish, especially coming along the ocean beaches in the fall. Lots of small fish. So that's good. Um, hopefully we don't kill them all because that would be good for the future. In terms of larger fish, yeah, boy, you've got to work for them. There's not a lot of them. So, yeah, uh, actually the spring of 2019 was quite a bit worse than the spring of 2018. So, uh, we've got some new regulations coming. Hopefully uh, things turn around. And you will not see a bluefish in this video. Uh, I caught just a handful. I bet I didn't catch 10. Uh, everybody's saying the same thing. Uh, looks like we're going to face some new regulations on those as well. False albacore fishing was pretty good. Uh, they tended to stay more off the shore this year than previous years, but that was still decent, uh, so no real complaints on those. All right, so you saw one aspect of the trolling motor, and that was dialing in a drift. What I'm doing here is I'm anchoring the boat with the trolling motor using the spot lock feature. And if you fish for things like blackfish, any kind of fish where you need to be right on the structure, this is such a game changer because first of all, I'm going with the electric trolling motor here, nice and quiet, not disturbing the fish, and I'm able to position the boat right over the structure. I'm just watching that fish finder, um, trying to get on the, the most uh, productive part of the structure, get right up into the rocks, and once I'm there, I'm just going to push a button. I'm going to push the anchor button on that remote, and that's going to just lock me in. It's so quick. It's so quiet. I'm not banging anchors around and missing it with the first shot on the anchor. And yeah, there it is. Look, there's the structure. Boom. I'm going to push a button. I'm going to stay right on that. And for stuff like black fishing and other species, boy, it's uh, there's just no, you know, nothing beats it. So this rod wasn't new for 2019, but it was new for me. It's the uh, Tsunami Slim Wave, the six foot four inch. Um, as soon as I tried this for blackfish, there was no going back to any other rod. That was it for me. It's just perfect for this kind of fishing. And I showed some wading fishing. Uh, the Frog Togs Hellbender waders, both the boot foot and the stocking foot. First year with those. Loved them. And they held up great. Really like them. I'm also wearing their jacket. It's a Pilot too. I actually just wear that around. I wear it to work and stuff besides fishing. So, yeah, it's really nice. Oh, oh this is the best one yet. Oh, wow. Not swinging that one. Mm. 
two more pieces of gear to mention. Uh, the Tsunami Evict reel that I'm using, and it's spooled with Daiwa J Braid Grand line. I think both of those are new for 2019, and I like both of those. I especially like the Grand line uh, on the spinning reels for casting. All right, nothing wrong with your computer. This is pitch black for a few seconds. It's going to get going. Uh, there's not supposed to be sharks in Long Island Sound. When somebody sees one, it typically gets in the news on the TV or something. Uh, well, here we go. Long Island Sound Shark. Yeah, 50 pound braid, uh, tight drag. I, I really just can't keep the rod up. He's pulling it down. I'm trying not to let him turn his head. All right, this is about 18 minutes later. Oh my goodness, look how big he is. Yes, don't come near me. Ooh. Right, yes. Problem is, there's no water here. He's going to bottom out here. Alright, All right, well that's it. I, I'm out of the water here. He's very large. Okay, big brown shark. Uh, yeah, I never thought I'd see anything like this. So I'm really being careful here. I don't know what this thing's capable of. It's I'm going to get it out there, and off he goes, and it's going to swim off just fine, which made me really happy to see it go. Um, yep, uh, if I never hook another one, I'll be just fine with that. Okay, so why were all of my reels in that bucket at the beginning of the video? Well, I'm packing, and it's uh, not for a short trip either. In a few weeks after this video goes up, uh, I'm going to retire from my day job and I will start wintering on Pine Island in southwest Florida. And I'll be back up here for the regular, what we consider a regular season, May through November. But I'm going to be spending my winters uh, down in Florida. So you're going to see some new fish on this channel, snook, redfish, tarpon, whatever swims down there. So obviously... I am really looking forward to that. So, yep, I think you'll see that probably around the beginning of February once the move is made and I can get out there and start uh, figuring out the fish and shooting some video. And I know I'm going to be starting off pretty stupid because uh, I know some things about that fishery, but I've got a lot to learn. That's going to be a big fun part of it is being uh, somewhat of a novice again in, in terms of those species. So really looking forward to that. Uh, in the meantime, I want to wish you guys a happy new year and uh, happy holidays and all of that. And I'm going to leave you with one last piece of advice to always be aware of your surroundings, especially when walking backwards.